little back rub to a friend right now. cannot believe it. Wasn't it just June or May or July or any other month besides October? It is amazing how fast that summer went, wasn't it? And speaking of things moving fast, um, there's something in this room that's moving really fast. There's a fly in here. There's this big fly that's buzzing around really fast and I've been trying to catch it so I can let it go back outside, but I haven't caught it yet. So if you guys happen to see a little tiny bug going bzz, bzz, or flying around here, that's what it is. So I'm going to keep trying to find it, but it keeps like flying by super fast and then it'll go hide behind something and so then I can't find it. And then it'll come back out again and buzz right back. So. I I really hope I can find it because I want to let it go back outside, but uh, I've, I've been having a little bit of trouble finding it. So <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe I'll be in the middle of singing later and you'll just see it go by. I don't know. Keep your eyes peeled. You might see it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about our schedule for the day. We just did our ah la 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 hallelujahs. We're about to go see Jimmy for his jo jokes and word of the day. We'll come back here for our Bible time. We'll have offering and prayer. We'll go see Amanda for a craft. We'll come back here for music. And then we're gonna get an update on the tomatoes. If you remember from last week, I called up Miss Cara, who also makes the Missions Moments videos for us. Because I had remembered that Miss Cara has a really great recipe for green tomatoes. So I called her up and I said, Miss Cart, would you like to have these tomatoes from Amanda's tomato plant and use your recipe to make something delicious? And she said yes. So she made a video for us of her making a salsa. So for our very last thing for today, we're going to get to see the video of Miss Cara making the salsa and hopefully Amanda and I will get to try it at some point and I'm so excited. All right, well, I'll see you guys after Jimmy. Bye. Hello there, Children's Church. How are you today? So today I'm wearing a hat which is called a peaked cap, or sometimes it's called a captain's hat. So it's called a captain's hat because sometimes on, on things like sailboats, the captain might wear a hat like that, so everybody can tell that he or she is the captain. 
Now, when I wear hats with you guys, it's, it's kind of just for fun. But there are lots of times that people wear hats which, which tell other people what their job is. The captain's hat is kind of like that. And I actually learned this week about a special hat which is like that, which is in the Bible. But before we get to that, I do have some jokes to tell you. Ready? <clears throat> Why don't sailors like to buy new hats? Well, because they're afraid of capsizing. Get it? Because if it's two words, capsizing could be figuring out the right size of cap to go on your head. But when it's one word, capsizing means a boat sinking and sailors do not want that. Mm. Mm. Oh, how would you describe a goldfish who likes to wear really fancy hats? You might say that he's sophisticated. Get it? Because it sounds like sophisticated, but with the word fish in it, sophisticated. <laughs> oh, what did the hat say to the scarf? It said, you hang around here and I'll go on ahead. Get it? Because Scarves hang around your shoulders and hats go on your head? Mm -hmm. And now, why, why can jokes about hats be so hard to understand? Because they just go over your head. Get it? Because something that goes over your head, that, that's a way of saying that you don't really understand something. But hats go, you know, over your head? <laughs> oh, what do you think? You know, it's, it's kind of funny. I've found a whole lot of different hats to show you. But I had kind of a hard time coming up with jokes about hats. I hope you liked those, though. Mm. Anyway, before I tell you about the special hat I learned about from the Bible, I need to tell you what our new word is. This week, our word of the day is consecrate. That's kind of a long word, so it helps if we describe it using another word. And, and there's one that I actually talked about a little bit while we were le learning the Lord's Prayer. To consecrate something means to treat it as being holy. And if you don't remember what that means, it means that we set that thing apart as belonging to God. So, when something is consecrated, it means that that thing is now treated as being special because it belongs to God in a special way. Now, are you ready to hear about the hat? So, I was reading the book of Exodus with my mom. And it, and it talks about how one person was chosen to be the high priest. Now, the high priest had the job of serving God in some special ways that none of the rest of the people did, like man, making sacrifices and praying for God's people in the temple. We could even say that the high priest himself was consecrated to God because his life belonged to God in a special way. In fact, when someone became the high priest, he was dressed in a beautiful set of clothes with a great big hat on his head, and on the front of the hat, there was some writing which said, Holy to the Lord. So whenever someone looked at the high priest, they could read a reminder right off the priest's hat that he had been consecrated to the priesthood. That is... The, the priest had been chosen to serve God in a special way, so he was holy to the Lord. Now, I thought this was really cool, but that made me wonder why none of our pastors at church wear hats like that. I mean, wouldn't it be neat if Pastor Booker or Pastor Adam wore great big hats with writing on the front? But my mom explained that 
when Jesus came and when he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, he actually made it so no one needs to be the high priest anymore. You remember how when the high priest was consecrated to God, his job was to spend his life serving God in a special way? Well, the Bible tells us that now, instead of just one person doing all that, all of God's people are kind of like priests. When we follow Jesus, we get the special job of serving God with our lives. We are consecrated and made holy to the Lord. Isn't that amazing? And serving God is the most wonderful thing we could possibly do with our lives. I don't think I'll ever get tired of, of hearing about Jesus and all that he's done for us. Now, I think it's time to learn even more in our Bible story, so I better go. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. Hello, friends. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed Jimmy's jokes, and I hope you learned something new from his word of the day. So we're going to be using the word a little bit later in children's church. So I hope you guys remember a little bit about what it means. For now, we're going to be doing our Bible time, and we've been doing a series on Psalms. King David wrote so many of the Psalms. And when King David was writing the Psalms, he was praying to God. Sometimes he was telling God about how happy he was. Sometimes he was telling God about how he was sad or upset. But no matter what, David always wanted to tell God, I will praise you, which is amazing. So today we're going to be reading a book called Sometimes I Get Lonely. Have you ever felt lonely before? I've felt lonely before. I've felt lonely lots of times before. But one of the best things that we can remember when we're lonely is that God is always with us and he'll never leave us. So this book is going to be about that. Sometimes I get lonely. Do you know what I saw today, God? A deer, a real live deer, drinking at a stream of water. She sure looked thirsty. I think she wanted a drink of water more than anything else in the world. Have you ever been thirsty before? <laughs> I bet you have. Sometimes I've gotten so thirsty, I just could not wait for a drink of water. Do you know what she reminded me of? Me. And the water reminded me of you, God. Do you know why? Because sometimes I get lonely and lonely is an empty feeling, like being really thirsty. Sometimes I get lonely and I need to know that you're there. So this little girl is saying that just like the deer was so thirsty and needed a drink of water, this little girl is sometimes she gets lonely in her heart and she needs God. Just like that deer needed a drink of water, her heart needs God. I get lonely when I fight with my friend and we're mad at each other. Then I'm afraid she'll find another best friend. I get lonely when we go visiting and there are only grown-ups. Grown-ups talking and talking to each other, but not to me.
And sometimes I get lonely even when there are kids around. Like the time we went on a field trip to the museum. My partner was sick and didn't come on the trip, so I had no one to be with. But when I get lonely, you know what? I say to myself, hey, why are you so sad? God loves you and you can talk to him. You're my friend, God, only you're a different kind of friend. You're not like a kid who climbs on the other side of the teeter-totter or twirls the other end of the jump rope or draws hopscotch squares on the sidewalk. You're a special kind of friend. Even though I can't see you, I know you are with me on the playground at my house, in my classroom, and everywhere I go. You are always with me and I can talk to you anytime. You fill my heart with peace and joy. And I feel your love all over me, like a waterfall splashing over the rocks. I feel your love in the daytime. I feel your love at night. So those times when I get lonely, you know what? I say to myself, hey, why are you so sad? God loves you and you can talk to him. And then I know you're there for me, like a stream of water for a thirsty deer. All right, so I'm going to read uh, um, some Bible verses for us from Psalm 42. And that's where this book took some Bible verses from. So at the beginning of Psalm 42, it says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Have you guys heard a hymn that starts off at the beginning and says, As the deer longeth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. That song is talking about how just like a deer will get really thirsty and will need water, our souls get thirsty for God, they need God. Our souls need God so much. And God is always there to give himself to us, which is great. And then there's a question that says, when can I go and meet with God? What do you guys think the answer to that is? Always, right? We can always talk to God. And then verse five says, why are you sad, my soul? Why are you so sad within me? Put your hope in God. I will praise him, my savior and my God. So here we are again. David is talking about how he's sad, how his soul is sad, but he has encouragement because he knows he can put his hope in God he can put his trust in God and he will still praise God even when he feels sad. 
And then I love this verse. This is verse eight. It says, by day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me. Do you guys know that God sings over us? I'm going to share with you a verse that's actually not in the book of Psalms. This one is in the book of Zephaniah. It's kind of a funny word, isn't it? Zephaniah. So this is Zephaniah 3, 17. And it says, The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. God loves us so much that he sings over us. Isn't that amazing? And back to Psalm 42. You know what David ends on? He ends again with, Why are you sad? Oh, my soul, why are you so sad within me? Put your hope in God. I will praise him, my Savior and my God. All right, well, that wraps it up for Bible time. So I'm going to get everything set up for offering, and then we can start with that. See you there. All right, so I'm all ready for offering. If you would like to get a basket of your very own, you might find something that looks like this, but it could also be a bowl from your kitchen, a plastic tub from your room, or even the lid to a plastic tub. So if you would like to get your own basket, I'll put on some music so you'll have some time to go find something. And when you get back and when the song is over, we'll start our offering time. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue. A little sad, but I know just what to do. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, oh. I have learned that I can go to Jesus. He lifts me up whenever I need it. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh. When I'm worried, when I'm feeling down, that's when God comes through, turns it all around. Yeah, He gives me joy. ready to start offering. What you can do is you can take your hand and gently place it in the basket and that tells Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to give you my heart today. 
which is a wonderful offering that you can give to God. And what that means is you're telling him that you love him. All right, so just like what we've done in the past couple of weeks, we're going to take a few verses from the Bible and use them in our prayer to God today. So I'm going to look at Psalm 42, what we were just reading during Bible time, and we're going to talk to God about how our soul wants God so much. Our heart is thirsty for God just like a deer is so thirsty for water and it finds the stream and it gets a nice cool drink. Our hearts are so thirsty for God. Our hearts need God so, so, so much. And he is there to give us his love. I'm also going to be talking to God about how amazing it is that he loves us, how he loves us all the time, how he directs his love by day and at night, his song is with us. He is singing over us because he loves us so much. So I'm just going to say a big thank you to God for his love. Put your hands in the air. Put your hands in your hair. Get ready for prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for your love. Just like how a deer gets thirsty and finds a stream to drink water, our hearts get thirsty for you. Our hearts need you and your love so much. And God, you give us your love. You love us by the day, and you rejoice over us with singing. God, your love is amazing. Thank you so much. God, sometimes we get lonely. Sometimes we feel lonely when we don't have friends to play with. Or maybe we got into an argument with our friend. Or maybe we're at school or in a classroom and no one wants to play with us or be in our group. And we feel really sad and really lonely. God, during those times that we feel sad or lonely, please help to remind us that you are always with us. No matter where we are, you are always there. And we can talk to you anytime and anywhere. We can tell you about how our hearts are sad, and we can ask you for encouragement. God, please give us peace and joy in those moments when we are feeling lonely. Please help us to remember that you are there and give us strength. God, please help us to have a good rest of the day, and please help us to have a good week. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me for offering and prayer. Now we're going to go see Amanda and see what craft she has for us today. I'll see you back here for music time. Bye. your two templates. If you don't have a printer or, or if you can't print them out, you can make your very own. If you take a white sheet of paper, you or a grown-up can write the verse Psalm 42.1 down at the bottom. And this one is from the International Children's Bible Translation. It says, a deer thirsts for a stream of water in the same way I thirst for you, God. And then on this piece of paper, I have the face of a deer. So you can either print it out, or, or, or you, can, you can draw it yourself, or, or you can have a mom or a dad or, or another grown-up draw it for you. Okay, so the first step is we need to color one of these faces. Great. So now that we have our deer all colored, we need to cut it out. So now that we've got the head cut out for the deer, what we need to do is we need to glue it onto this piece of paper and also if you guys remember from other videos that I've done whenever I'm doing some sort of like coloring paper like this I also like to glue it onto a piece of construction paper because I just think it looks really cool all right so I'm gonna glue it and then I'll be right back okay so everything's all glued and it looks great you might be wondering why Amanda did you put the deer face so low on the paper like, like why didn't you put the face more up there good question so that's because I wanted lots of empty white room here because what we're gonna do is we're going to add antlers onto the deer so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take your hands and you're gonna put them down here and here and you're gonna spread out your fingers really wide and it's going to make these really awesome antlers for your deer now, my hands don't really spread out nice and wide like your fingers do, because I have puppet hands. But you guys can spread out your fingers really wide, and then you or, or a grown-up can help you trace your fingers around so that you make antlers on the deer. Okay, so I trace my hands on here for the antlers, and like I said, you guys should spread out your fingers really wide so you get lots of different fingers for the antlers. My fingers don't spread out because I have puppet hands, but it still looks really good. Okay, and the last step is just to decorate it. So use whatever stickers you want, or you can put on grass and flowers. Maybe you can even draw in a little river because this verse says that a deer thirsts for water and sometimes they have to go to a stream or a river to get water. Welcome back. Did you have fun with Amanda and her craft? 
All right, well, we are going to start doing singing. We're going to do a couple of songs that you guys probably know, and we're going to start learning a new one today, too. So first, we're going to start off with He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. He's got the whole world. to say cast your burdens upon Jesus for he cares for you so what does it mean to cast your burden upon Jesus well when we're talking about burdens it's anything that makes our heart really heavy so maybe you're sad or upset about something and it's making your heart feel so heavy so just like today we were reading about how sometimes we get lonely and maybe being lonely is something that makes your heart really sad so when we say cast your burdens upon jesus we're saying that you can talk to jesus about anything even when your heart is really heavy because it's really sad or upset or angry about something, you can take all of that and give it to God, meaning that you can tell God about everything that's on your heart and he will listen to you. All right, so this song has a few different actions with it. So like I just showed you, cast your burdens upon Jesus for he cares for you. And then we're gonna be saying, higher, 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 lift Jesus higher, and mighty, 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 our God is mighty, and we're also going to be saying deeper, 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 his love is deeper, and wider, 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 his love is wider, so we're talking about how deep and how wide is God's love because he loves us so, so, so much.
a new song today. So it's called Take My Life and Let It Be and it's a hymn. So if you guys have ever been to the big sanctuary at Park Street Church inside of the pews right in front of you when you sit down there are Bibles which are the black books they look like this one and then there are hymnals which are the red books and in the morning services, we use the hymnals that has like the words for the songs in it for us to sing. So the song that I picked is from one of those hymnals. So the beginning of the song says, take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee. So in this song, it's us singing and we are talking to God. So let me show you guys the actions for the beginning. It says, take my life. So when we say take, we're going to like pick something up. And when it says life, we're gonna make these kind of L shapes with our fingers and move them upwards. It's kind of similar to, we learned a different word filled with when we were doing the song, holy is the Lord and we said, filled with. So it's kind of similar to that, but instead with our L shapes. So life. Sometimes people stick out these fingers also. I'm going to go life. Take my life. And then we're going to say, let it be consecrated. So consecrated, we're going to make a C shape because consecrated starts with C. Consecrated Lord I taught you guys this before, right? We're going to have an L shape with our finger. Lord to thee. So let's talk about what those words mean. Well, there's a big word in there, our consecrated word. That was Jimmy's word of the day. We're saying, God, take my life and let it be set apart for you. I want my life to be all for you, God. I want to follow you. I want to obey you. I want to love you with my whole heart, with my whole mind, my whole soul, my entire body, my entire life. I want to love you. So we're saying, God, take my life and let it be consecrated. So turned into something that is set apart just for you. I want my life to be just for you. And then the next part says, take my moments and my days. So we're going to say, take my moments and my days. And we're going to say, let them flow in ceaseless praise. So what that means is we're saying, God, take all of the moments in my life Take all of the days in my life and let me always be praising you. When we say, 
let it flow in ceaseless praise that means never ending i want every single day of my life to be about praising you god never ending praise just for you and we've been talking about praise in the book of psalms haven't we about how king david wrote so many psalms that included praising the lord all right so let's learn the melody let me get a, a note from my guitar if you remember when i was teaching you all things bright and beautiful i would have to go back and play the note on my guitar so i'm gonna do that right here Take my life and let it be. Let's try that together. Take my life and let it be. One more time. Take my life and let it be. say consecrated Lord to consecrated Lord to The second part of the verse has a pretty similar melody, but it's a little bit different at the end. So let's do a repeat after me. Take my moments and my days. All right, let's try it again. Take my moments and my days. One more time. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let's try it again. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. All right, so let's sing it all from the very beginning. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise, let them flow in ceaseless praise. All right, one more time. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Awesome job, guys. All right, well, we will keep working on that song, and each week as we work on it, you'll get to know the melody and the words better and better, and it will get easier and easier to sing. All right, well, we're done with music time for the day. So let's go back to my house and let's check on Amanda's tomato plant and hear the update from Miss Cara about the salsa. I'm so excited. All right, see you there. Hello friends, welcome to my backyard. So if you'll notice something is a little bit different 
about Amanda's tomato plant. There's no more tomatoes on it. So last Monday, I picked all of the tomatoes and I dropped them off at Miss Cara's house so she could make the salsa with it. Miss Cara made a wonderful video showing us exactly how she made the salsa and it looks so delicious. All right, so let's go check it out. Hello friends, it's Monday morning and I'm ready to pick these tomatoes and get them over to Miss Cara. I have a nice little basket that I'm gonna put them in. I've washed my hands so that they're all clean. So now we're ready to pick the tomatoes. Oh friends, this is so exciting. I wanna make sure I don't hurt the tomatoes when I pick them. These little baby ones, how do they come off? Do they come off easily? Oh, yep, it just popped right off. Oh, and we have a friend here that came to say hello. Hello, Luna. Are you watching us pick the tomatoes? Oh, this one's pretty big. All right, so, so far we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then over on this side, we have four more. Okay, so all of the tomatoes are picked and we are ready to drive over to Miss Cara's house. Hello friends! So I just got to Miss Cara's house. It's whoop, that one right there and I'm about to go deliver the tomatoes. Okay, so there's uh, 12 in there, and if you remember, there's two really tiny ones, and the other ones are kind of like small or medium size. Perfect. Perfect. I cannot wait to make my salsa with them. That's so exciting. Okay, so you're gonna uh, make the video and then send it to me, right? I will send it to you, and I'll keep you posted. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hello, Christina, Amanda, and Park Street Kids. I just got Christina and Amanda's green tomatoes. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I make green tomato salsa. So first up, I'm going to get my hair out of the way. Now, I start with roasting the green tomatoes because most vegetables taste better roasted. Uh, except I know tomatoes are technically a vegetable, uh, but they still taste really, really good roasted. So I'm going to start by cutting them. I'm going to bring all the green tomatoes onto my cutting board. Next, I'm going to put them on a cookie sheet. Drizzle some olive oil on it. And since I happen to also have some red tomatoes, I know this is Amanda's favorite color, uh, I'm going to add red tomatoes too to roast. Now we need to pop these into the oven to roast. So that means they're gonna be cooked at a really high heat to pull out all those flavors. Uh, we're gonna roast them, them for about 15, 20 minutes. Ah, my uh, stove just told me that it's at the hot enough temperature. So let's pop these in. I'm gonna set my timer. Now, 
Now, meanwhile, I'm going to cut up the other uh, vegetables that I like to put in my salsa. I love color. So the first thing I'm going to add is a purple onion. Now we're going to add into our bowl all these beautiful purple onions. So since I love color, I am next going to add in this, dice up this beautiful orange pepper. Ooh, lots of good color. Now, I really like cilantro. Cilantro, let me show you. It's a green herb, so it looks kind of like parsley, but it tastes very different. But first up, I need to get all the little leaves off of this stalk, and then I'll chop them up really small. We'll go compost these. And let's add this brilliant green cilantro to our bowl. I am going to go wash my hands and wash our cutting board. Be right back. Our timer just went off, so let's pull our green tomatoes out of the oven. They look beautiful. I'll show you what they look like uh, when they cool down just a bit. And there are our roasted green tomatoes and red tomatoes. Don't they look beautiful and juicy? Okay, they're about cool and we can start cutting them up. I love how the red tomatoes are very soft and they turn into a mush after we've roasted them. But the green tomatoes retain their shape, so they are much more firm. Look at all that beautiful color. Let's add it to our bowl. The last thing we're going to do is add some lime. I have to move my cutting board out of the way. So let's add our lime. We're gonna squeeze our lime, all that lime juice. Go right on in. Finally, let's add some salt and pepper. I'm going to add pink salt, my favorite color. So we have some of Amanda's favorite color, and I'm adding some salt with my favorite color. And a little bit of black pepper, too. I'll just sprinkle this on top. Let's mix this up. Ooh, look at all of this colors mixing up together. Mmm, it smells so good. It smells fresh and it smells like tomatoes. Uh, and I smell the parsley and a little bit of the red onion. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Okay, let's taste. Mmm, perfection. Amanda and Christina, thank you so much for sharing your green tomatoes with me. They produce an utterly amazing salsa. All your hard work growing the, the tomato plant and all of your prayers, this is it. It came together and it's made something amazing. So just like that, God always uses things as well for good. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, kids. I'll see you next time. Bye. Ooh, yummy. That looks so good. Thank you, Miss Cara. Amanda and I can't wait to try it out. So this week, I'm gonna head over to Miss Cara's and pick up a little jar of the salsa that she saved just for me and Amanda. We're gonna make a video of trying it to show you guys for next week. All right, well, that wraps it up for Children's Church. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I hope you have a great week. See you next time.